My name is Vahid Chitso, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, I'm Kristen Yarker. I'm a registered dietitian in beautiful Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. Awesome, awesome. I love Canada. It's cool. Um, <laughs> You guys got a lot of rivers. I don't know if everybody knows, but that country has more rivers than anything else. You guys got a lot of rivers. We have a lot of fresh water. Yep, rivers, lakes. I mean, we're really lucky that we have so much outdoor space for the number of people who live here. And particularly during these times, it's been amazing to be able to still physical distance and get outside. Yeah, and I think planet Earth, Mother Earth, is getting a little break from all of us. Uh, <laughs> I see that I see my neighborhood. It's it's really amazing. It's clear. Um, but LA just opened up, so it might be just be. Uh, it might just go back to normal. So I got some questions. Mm -hmm. Where do you think most individuals, when it comes to nutrition and diet, and, and I know those two are different. I'm probably not the best person to explain the differences, right? But I've been caught where my wife said those two are different, and, and I did, so they are different. But where do you think most people get it wrong? What are the pitfalls that you should watch out for? Well, I think it really connects in well with what you're talking about, because what I find is that so many people, when they want to eat better or take care of themselves, they go into a place where they're going to eat less of something. They're not going to do something anymore. They go in with a really restrictive mindset. And I, I don't blame people for this. That's really very much what our culture teaches us, what some people call the diet culture. Uh, and so I really like the approach that I take with people. And what I find is a mindset that needs to change to turn around is to think more in abundance. So I, exactly what, what you talk about here in that when we are restricting, when we're denying ourselves things, we just, you know, there's that part of us that's going to spring up and, and, uh, and rebel against that. And so instead, switching that mindset to, am I getting enough of the good stuff? Am I getting enough vegetables and, and taking care of your body, investing in your body in that way is an important mindset change that I then I work with my clients to have so that then people are making good things for themselves. And it's more doable and long term than and versus if you're just denying yourself things that being healthy means I'm never going to do this again or that again. I think one of the profound moments for me was I, I was listening to a podcast. And it just happened that the person was talking about this. And the person said a handful of, of all men might be 150 calories. But this 150 calories comes with fiber. And he mentioned a couple of nutrition ingredients that is beside that. And then he compared it with something else that was the same amount of calories, but wasn't as good. And he didn't, he didn't have those super nutrients. So calorie-wise, was the same. But this was a lot more beneficial. So when I heard that, I think I was more being informed. And when mm -hmm. I'm form, I can make a better decision. So my question is this. If someone like myself is busy trying to put out fires all day long, and busy, where should I go to get more informed? Not to lose weight, not to start eating healthy tomorrow. I just want to get informed so I can make ba ba daily better decisions for my future. It's true. I think with I mean, we're in a world, I mean, we're connecting today from two different parts of the world through social media. I'm not anti, you know, social media, anti internet. But at the same time, it's so there's so much information out there now. And everybody claims to be an expert. And even if people are saying the right information, it might not apply to you. Like there's such a higher level of expertise that's needed. And so I really think the only intelligent response to all of this information that's available out there is to be confused. And so what I really recommend is going to a, a registered dietitian so that they, they, they are people who study nutrition and take the years of education in university and learn when the rules apply, when there's exceptions that are appropriate, um, so that they can apply things to specifically you in your busy life. I, I think you just nailed it right away. I mean, to me, it's like, it's funny. 
When we have a legal issue, we go to attorneys. When we when our, when our car breaks down, we go to auto repair shop. When mm-hmm. you want to get a haircut, you don't go to your neighbor. You go to a hairstylist. You know, <laughs> so we do all that. But here's the funny part: I see on Instagram, and not to generalize everybody, but I see some people. They just got good physique, and they just look good. And all of a sudden, because they look good and they look sexy, that's the. It's very subjective what we call sexy, right? So we look, and, and I don't look like any of them. All these people, like I have to lose 200 pounds to look like any of them. So it's very funny, right? So just yeah. because they look good, we think that just doing a lot of cardio or doing these type of regimens is going to do it. But I think what we put in our mouth is way more important than what we do as far as exercise. Yeah, if it comes to weight loss, what the research shows is that, it, is that, yes, eating has a much bigger role. It's not exactly percentages, but it's kind of like that 80-20, that Pareto principle, where the, the nutrition is the most significant and then uh, exercise is contributes as well, but a more minor part. But it's still great to be incorporating physical activity for reasons beyond just losing weight, right? I mean, it's good to move our bodies. Our bodies are meant to move. So many benefits from that. But then also when you're looking to then maintain weight, physical activity is a bigger portion of the the requirements. So whenever I'm working with people, we work to incorporate physical activity as part of their changes uh, so that it's not like, okay, I've lost weight, now what? Then you have to start a whole bunch of new habits, right? It's like, no, we've been already working on healthy habits and trusting that if the body's carrying extra weight, that weight will come off and then it will arrive at its happy weight and we can maintain it there because we've already established the good habits that got you there. So if you had to give me like three items <laughs> that we could improve on, and, and this has been my question, I'm trying mm-hmm. to get some shortcut from you. I know shortcuts <laughs> don't work, but I'm trying to, but I'm, I'm doing my best to pull it out. What can I do in the office? That's so funny. That's completely anti what I just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's cool. Listen, I have to try. I'm a businessman. I got to try. So, you know, there's A for effort, right? Yeah. So if, if I had to, uh, like, one of the things that I've been trying to figure out is I got this creamer that I really like, hazelnut, and I keep putting it inside my coffee, but I'm trying to find out what the hell is in this damn thing, and I can't figure it out. Mm. So the other day I was telling myself, I was like, what if this thing that I'm putting in there is not all natural? Even though it might say all natural, that's a whole entire definition. You could do a whole entire video on what they consider all natural <laughs> ingredients, right? So yeah. I was thinking, what can I do as a busy entrepreneur that you think over a long period of time gives me the right habit while considering that I'm extremely busy? Absolutely. And so things like, again, from that abundance mindset, I always look first to be like, are you getting enough vegetables? Like that's really an important foundation uh, for for healthy eating. And, you know, I'm a big fan of whatever vegetables you like in whatever easy format, you know, there is for you. I, um, you know, I'm sure the grocery stores near you are similar to the ones near me where more and more already prepared vegetables are ready there. You know, it kind of started with the baby carrots and now there's, you know, like the cherry tomatoes and the broccoli's already cut up and it's just so easy to grab vegetables to go. And so you don't have to be making like elaborate things. I too work, all my clients are super busy people. They're professionals, they're entrepreneurs, you know, so they're not going to be having time to make like 17 step ingredients, like smoothies and things like that. You know, that's not what's needed, but you do need to get the vegetables. And what I find is that a lot of people who come to me and they're like, I think I'm a pretty healthy eater. You know, I just want as like an expert uh, guidance. What I find is that often they're getting about half of the amount of vegetables that I recommend. And so that's really a great place to start. So again, from that abundance are mindset, you, are, is, are you yeah. pro, are you are you pro organic? Does it matter? Do I have to watch out if it's organic or non organic? Would that make a big difference? <laughs> I mean, that's a big that's a bigger question. It's beyond just the health of you as an individual. That's looking at uh, like an environmental question and a social question. So if if organic. Uh, vegetables fit in your budget and they're available to you, then they're great. 
Um, I have a lot of farmers nearby me here who have great practices, but they haven't necessarily gone through the, the loopholes of becoming certified organic. So I do a lot of shopping at my local farmers and, and farm stands, farmers markets. And, you know, I ask them a few questions about what they do. They're not certified organic, but they've got great practices. So I, you know, happy to support um, them. But at the same time, you know, if somebody, you know, budget doesn't stretch that far to be able to include all organic, still eating closer to the way nature made it and less processed is still better for the environment, better for us. You know, we can't really separate ourselves from the environment. But eating even just plain vegetables versus highly processed foods, that's a great step, you know, and we can absolutely be healthy moving in that way. And then, um, you know, if organic fits within your um, eating habits and if you're in a location where more locally grown ones are organic, then that's going to be a great choice. I love it. How do people find you? Yeah, I'm on Instagram here at Kristen Yarker. My website is kristenyarker.com. And I'm quite active on YouTube as well under my some old branding and that. So it's at, confusingly at Vite K Nutrition. But if you head to my Instagram or my website, people can find me anywhere through there. And also uh, purchase my book through there through Amazon. And I have a little affiliate link. So it's nice to give me some support uh, if you buy my book that way. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule being here. Definitely put more pictures of the nature. Make us a little bit more jealous on your <laughs> IG that all of us that are sitting in the city, that <laughs> live in the city, be a little bit more jealous. And hopefully we'll get some people to migrate to Canada. But I like the weather here. You guys get way too much snow. I don't uh, want to be and stuff like that. There you go. Well, I live where we don't really get snow, but where I'm just north of Seattle, so I have basically the same weather as Seattle here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Stay safe. Have a great day. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.